from Dr. Mahomba's office where we discuss issues to do with COVID. Currently, the number stands at 38 and of late we have received a lot of recoveries. Dr. Agnes Mahomba is now the chief coordinator on COVID-19 response in the office of the president and cabinet. Dr. Mahomba, where do we stand right now? What are the statistics as far as the COVID-19 pandemic is concerned in Zimbabwe? Thank you very much. We have continued to push so hard to test as many as possible so that we're clear in terms of where we are with the epidemic, as you rightly said. Uh, we have a total of 38 positives as of yesterday. Uh, we're still waiting for the uh, comprehensive uh, picture of how many were tested. But I'm, I'm happy to say even the day before, we tested um, a PCR 11,191. That's really a large number when you're talking diagnosis. And those are the numbers that we want to see. Remember when we started, we were talking of trying to test up to 40,000 because we thought we would have a, a total of about 1,000 positive cases by end of April, May. And we're happy to say, as we're looking at the numbers, those small uh, that they are, it's beginning to give us a picture that we can actually work with, analyze and see what else we need to do. The numbers, many people are complaining about the low, num the low testing numbers in the country. Where are we, where do we stand? Are you happy with the current figures? We would like to test more, but when you're looking at the low numbers in terms of the, those that are confirmed, that's a good number. We don't want people to be positive. So if we test more and we continue to have less that are positive, that's a good sign. We're now saying, were we really projecting properly? Uh, is, our, is our epidemic going to be much less than what we thought? And this is where the scientists come in, like the Dr. Katsidira, who is here with us today, to really tell us what they are seeing, what they are thinking, so that we can reset the button, begin to relook at what else we need in this epidemic, in this coordination, as we move forward as a nation. Dr. Katsidira, these figures, are you happy with the numbers that have been tested so far in as far as uh, the coronavirus is concerned? My feeling is we need to be more focused mm -hmm. on who we test because what I, I worry about generally is um, you can test a whole lot of people but in those whole lot of people there may be very few positive cases. I don't want that to delay results on the one patient that I actually want a result quickly. So there's also an issue of numbers but there should be an issue of turnaround time. How fast should I get a result? As a physician, Dr. Katsidzira, what do you think of the lockdown now that the second phase is coming to an end? Is it yielding desired results? I, I think the whole idea of a lockdown has been to allow people to plan mm -hmm. and to get a handle of how things are going. Because remember, um, SARS-CoV-2 came rather late to Zimbabwe and we have had the benefit of seeing what was happening in other countries. So the lockdown in itself was good in the sense that it gave us a time to plan and a time to get a hand of where we are going. And I think it can now be refined. Coming to you, Dr. Mahomba, I know the question that is uppermost in every parent's mind right now is, are schools going to open anytime soon? Is it safe for the children to go back to school? What do you think? There are many things that you need to look at when you say you want to open schools. Remember, we, the past few days, we had busloads of returning residents. And remember, a, a large percentage of positives that we're seeing actually coming from the UKs and so on and so on. So as long as we have those large numbers that are in quarantine areas, and specifically we have extended to actually include schools where we quarantine the returning residents, there's a balancing act there. If we open schools now, the question is where are we going to put those large numbers that continue to come back? How do we manage isolating, quarantining those who are returning to make sure they don't spread the infection in Zimbabwe and at the same time look at the schools that we're using to reopen and get our children to continue learning. So that balancing act is what we're looking at as we move forward to re-look at our coordination and what we do, how we do things on the ground. Coming to you, Dr. Ketsuzira, as a parent, as a doctor, what do you think? Should schools open anytime soon? Look, I, I think it's a tricky, it's a tricky one. Intuitively, my feeling is uh, yes, schools should open fairly as soon as it is practical. Mm. The major issue that we need to remember is that children in themselves are not at a very high risk, not only of contracting COVID, but also of suffering complications. So the danger is not to the children, mm. but the danger would be to the, to the wider public. I, I, I see individual patients, Dr. Mahomba, 
since the, the hospital is the country. So, so, so to me, schools, one should move towards opening, but balance. And we also need to take cognizance of the fact that um, the new advent of uh, online learning mm -hmm. is going to benefit the affluent at the expense of the less privileged, who, by the way, are the majority in this country. Back to the issue of testing, how far have you gone with the decentralization of testing centers in the country? Thank you very much. The Minister of Health and Child Care has really done a lot to decentralize the testing to Bulawayo, to uh, other places, and you know they also opened up to the private sector, the Lancet laboratories, and so on and so on. And that decentralization continues. However, it needs to also be balanced as you're looking at the resources that are available, the commodities that are available. It's one thing just having many laboratories, but do you have the enough commodities to go around? and so on. So that's what they're actually looking at. And then in times uh, such as this, we, we always console ourselves with, with the positives. Mm -hmm. We are receiving quite a significant uh, number of recoveries. We now stand at 13. Um, what do you attribute this to? Well, a lot of those identified so much earlier, if you remember at the beginning, and hence it just speaks to us now retesting and finding out if they have recovered or not. It's a very natural process, and we are now seeing more of those numbers that we identified so much earlier that yes, they have recovered, and we're confirming and moving forward. Then coming to you, Dr. Katizira, um, in this era, are doctors able to offer virtual care in the country? Where do we stand in as far as virtual care is concerned as a country in this COVID-19 era? That's been a very topical thing, and um, everyone has been touting uh, virtual medicine. I think to some extent, virtual medicine may work, but ultimately, being a doctor depends on seeing patients, mm. examining them, and making a decision. Um, we mustn't be lured sometimes by um, new things until they've been tried and tested, because there may be risks that um, doctors may actually miss life-threatening conditions mm -hmm. by delivering virtual care. But by all means, it's something that people should explore, and it's part of how medicine and everything evolves. Recently, you published a paper titled The SARS-2 Epidemic in Zimbabwe. Maybe you can just uh, shed some light on that. Essentially, this paper was uh, motivated by thoughts that we had with a few colleagues in terms of where the trajectory of our disease is going to be and we looked at um, specific factors specific to Zimbabwe that we think may modify our trajectory. And we have always thought that um, the disease curve is not going to be as steep and as severe as in, um, in a whole lot of other countries. And, and, and I think this speaks to the relative economic and social isolation that Zimbabwe has. Because if you look across Sub-Saharan Africa, what you will see reflected then, that's very clear is that cases are the highest in countries that have a lot of international traffic. Okay. You talk of South Africa, mm -hmm. you talk of Ghana, you talk of Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they are less in countries that don't receive as much international traffic as Zimbabwe, Namibia, Botswana, and so forth. How long, uh, Dr. Mahomba, do you think uh, this COVID era and would take and for things to go back to normal as compared with other pandemics? This is the issue with new diseases. You never really know, but you just work with what you have and ensure that you're doing the right thing at the right time, planning accordingly as you move on. He's just told us, for example, that when he's looking at the paper that they just published, it's very clear that places like Zimbabwe, for example, perhaps our trajectory is not going to be as bad. But of course, of course, we're not out of the woods. But those are lessons that we look now at and say, okay, if our tra trajectory is not going to be there, but it's going to be here, how long are we therefore going to be in these woods? What is it that we need to do to readjust and still make sure we're focused and we're attacking it and moving with the response that we, we need? That is specific to Zimbabwe. So we are learning as we go. What we get tells us what to do, tells us how to project, how to begin to estimate. But we can never have it perfect because this is a new disease. So nobody knows what it's going to do. All we do in Zimbabwe, and I have to emphasize to Zimbabwe that we're planning for the worst. If it doesn't come as bad, according to his paper, for example, fantastic. But we continue to plan and coordinate for the for the worst case scenario. That's what we're doing.
Well, we can never have it perfect and we are learning as we go. After all, it is a novel disease and we learn as we go. I was speaking there to Dr. Agnes Mahomba, who is the Chief Coordinator on COVID-19 Response in the Office of the President and Cabinet, as well as Dr. Leolin Katizira, a consultant, physician and lecturer at the University of Zimbabwe College of Health Sciences. Thank you very much.